uh, Muskegon Heritage Museum of Business and Industry got started as an idea in uh, 1981. Um, the organization that founded the museum was a historic preservation group here in town. They got offered a free steam engine. They couldn't possibly turn that down, so they worked with the city of Muskegon to acquire our present location. We got it for back taxes and uh, paid a dollar for the building and then spent the better part of two years uh, cleaning up the building, restoring some fire damage that had happened in it, and uh, then we're able to move the steam engine you see behind me uh, in the spring of 1983. And it was off to the races from there. Uh, we have all sorts of fun toys I get to play with on a regular basis, so it's always exciting to come in on any given day. Kirk isn't kidding. The steam engine is eye-catching and impressive to see in action. The steam engine is a 90 horsepower Coralis valve stationary steam engine. It was originally installed in uh, the Brenham and Hartshorn Roller Shade factory, just a few blocks down the street from here. They built that factory in 1895 and powered the entire factory using three steam engines. The, the one we have was used to produce electricity to light the lights in the factory. They, and then uh, they had two larger steam engines that powered the line shafts and ran everything from table saws to sewing machines. And as legend has it, the oilers on the steam engine contributed to a common phrase that many of us have used at least once or twice. A number of uh, McCoy-style automatic oilers on the machine that, that drip oil to lubricate moving joints. And uh, the designer of those pieces were, uh, was a Michigan resident. He lived in Ypsilanti uh, named Elijah McCoy and uh, gave rise to that phrase that you know, we've all heard our whole lives, the real McCoy. So after he invented the, the Oilers, there were all sorts of knockoffs that hit the market. And people really wanted the real McCoy in order to guarantee that they were gonna get steady oil supply to moving joints on machines like the steam engine. A hub of innovation. Muskegon also played a large role in some of our favorite recreation activities. Should we spare you the details? or strike while the pins are hot. Brunswick is a popular name on the lanes, but the company was also innovating outside the bowling alley. Brunswick Corporation, as we know it, uh, got started in 1842. In 1906, they began to move out of Chicago into Muskegon. From 1906 until the 1990s, just about everything that had their name on it was made here in town. It's really amazing all the things they dabbled in because they had skilled woodworkers, they did a lot of cabinet making, they made um, pieces for contract work to make record uh, cabinets and radio cabinets. And um, They built bars and back bars, they built billiard tables, and, uh, bowling equipment, uh, the, uh, the floors and lanes. At one point they had the world's largest hardwood kiln here to dry maple so that they could make bowling alley equipment, the lanes and the uh, benches and uh, pins and those sorts of things. They don't realize that uh, Brunswick made truck tires and toilet seats. They've made uh, records. Uh, they had a recording studio here in town that saw some of the, the biggest names in music history come to Muskegon to record. From the lanes to the lakes, Muskegon influenced a variety of recreation forms, including making products for outdoor enthusiasts. And then we have a pretty large exhibit about maritime industries. Um, Muskegon's been a hotbed of sport fishing innovation, so pretty much everything that was ever in your tackle box was probably initially designed here and marketed out of Muskegon. Some of the, the earliest um, do-it-yourself fly tying equipment was mass-produced here in, in Muskegon. Um, we had an inventor in town that marketed a product called the Anderson Sport Tent, which was the first collapsible and portable ice fishing shanty. And we have one of those on display. Cannon downriggers were produced here and developed here for um, deep water fishing, and now they're used all over the world. We had uh, a number of boat manufacturers, and uh, one of the, the small boat shops that was run by a, a British immigrant uh, named Jim and Boat Works actually made Michigan's first flying boat. Um, the first seaplane produced here in the state was made right here in Muskegon. A more recent addition highlights the role African Americans played in business creation. That's one of our newest exhibits here in the building. We have a, a, an exhibit about um, small business owners in the African American community. The bulk of the migration to Muskegon occurred during World War II as part of the Second Great Migration. People coming up from all across the South 
immediately moved into uh, war production jobs here in town and you know, eventually brought their families here and built homes and established their own businesses. We're working with a number of community groups now to expand that to include more three-dimensional objects and um, to tell stories of black-owned media in the community and you know, we're hoping to just build those relationships and expand those stories. With a buzz of innovation and industry happening in the west side of the state, folks were eager to enjoy a cool beverage. And my goodness, there's even a Muskegon connection to Guinness. Muskegon had its first commercial brewery before it was even incorporated as a city. Um, lumberjacks are beer-powered machines, and without a, a good brewery, it was hard to <laughs> get those workers out in the woods. Muskegon Brewing Company got formed in, in uh, early 1857, uh, and it was a mom and pop shop when it first got started. A German immigrant couple came to town. He was a Bavarian trained master brewer, and she ran their first distribution point. She ran a tavern uh, pretty well, much single handedly, and they grew from producing just a few barrels of beer a month to about 300 barrels of beer a month. And then uh, a generation shift happened, and they sold the business to uh, three more German immigrants who then really up the output, they got up to about 3,000 barrels a month in production and we're a regional distributor uh, all the way from um, this Indiana state line up to um, Manistee and inland as far as you could travel in a day by wagon or rail. So they, uh, they stayed in business, they survived Prohibition and then uh, right before World War II sold to Grand Rapids Brewing Company who then right after the war sold, sold to Goebel and they stayed in business until 1959. Um, they had the distinction of being the first place in North America to have a license to brew Guinness beer. The Muskegon Heritage Museum of Business and Industry has even more to offer. There are major contributions to science, technology, agriculture, and pop culture. It all adds up to a one-of-a-kind Michigan experience. Industrial history is part of what makes Michigan move. You know, we've We've been a producer for the world for basically since statehood developed. And I take a lot of pleasure in seeing people realize just how many products uh, they use in their daily lives came from here or invented here. And you know, we always, always wow people when they, they come through.